this will make me feel a little bit better. As you remember, Emma, um, back in the day, <laughs> back in the day uh, when the um, Alito's draft of his brief was leaked in, what was it, in, in March or May? It was like, yeah, it was a May, April, something like that. Jeez, time is just, okay. it's hard to judge. And um, I think it was May. And there has been reporting. Now, supposedly there's an investigation go ongoing. And my prediction was if they found that it was a liberal uh, from the liberal side, that we would hear about that before the decision was announced. If we didn't, then we may never hear about it because it's a conservative. We haven't heard anything about it, but there is new reporting as to the implications of that leak. Now, this is not reporting as to the intentions of that leak. It is simply reporting as to what the leak actually caused. But two plus two plus two is six. And I will go through those twos in a moment. This is new reporting. And the other interesting thing is the vote was taken in December. It's a preliminary vote. There's time, obviously, to change people's minds, but that's what was going on. There was a lot of lobbying going on when that uh, brief was leaked. Here is a report from a CNN uh, reporter. Uh, what's her name? Joan Biscup. Cupick. Yeah. Biscupic, yeah. Biscupic. And um, I'm quite sure her, um, her sources on the Supreme Court are about as close to John Roberts as you can get. That may include being John Roberts, but here it is. Joining us to share her fascinating new reporting here is CNN legal analyst Joan Biskupic. Joan, tell us how hard he was fighting to bring some folks over to his side. Morning, Brianna and John. Extremely hard. He was trying week after week after the initial vote in December after oral arguments in which five of the justices on the far right voted to overturn Roe Roberts was alone in the middle wanting to uphold this Mississippi 15 week ban on abortions, but not go further than Roe. And then, of course, you had the three. All right, pause it for uh, one second. I just want to make sure saying, this absolutely this is academic at this point. But when you go to 15 weeks, you're basically you're, you're overruling Roe. Yes. And you're overruling Casey. You're creating a new standard. All right, continue. We don't want to do any of this. We don't want to disrupt abortion rights at all. So Roberts keeps trying. And it's interesting, Brianna, that not only uh, did his work affect, you know, his efforts toward uh, the two newest justices, Brett Kavanaugh and Amy Coney Barrett, but it had an effect on the others. The hard right justices became concerned that he could be successful. You know, the chief has himself switched votes in the past, and he has also been able to pick off uh, justices on the far conservative side for a more of a moderate centrist decision in certain cases. So they became anxious about what he was up to. And the liberals, who had such a defeat this session, started to have some hope that maybe Roe would not be overturned completely. But then on May 2nd, when the draft of the opinion was released and everything went public, it made John Roberts' efforts all the more, all the harder because he's a man who likes to work privately in secret, offering some concessions himself, seeking concessions for some sort of, you know, as I say, cross ideological compromise. And it, it went down to the wire, according to my sources. But in the end, he made no headway. Uh, the first vote Pause it for one more second. Now, I want to make something clear, too. It's not just a question of what John Roberts likes to do. That's not what made it harder. What made it harder was now it, it is Kavanaugh and Coney Barrett, if they switch, have switched. And they know what happened to John Roberts in the ACA case. Look, normal human beings think like, I've got this job forever. I'm just going to do what I think is right. Okay. But they're not normal human beings. Kavanaugh wanted to become a judge because he wanted to be able to walk around the country club and he wants to walk in the social circles he works in and he wants to, to, to be amongst these people as a Supreme Court justice. 
But if they're all shunning him as if he's Alan Dershowitz, you know, on the vineyard, he's, he's bummed out. And the last thing he's going to do is switch because Roberts in 2012 got hammered in the conservative press, including the Wall Street Journal, because of his switch on the ACA. Whoever leaked it in, in 2012, I bet you, 2013, also did this one. Is Both Wall guess. Street Journal leaks, yes? Both Wall Street Journal leaks. Yeah. And there was a Wall Street Journal uh, op-ed that also contained essentially a leak from inside the, uh, um, uh, the, the Supreme Court. And those are the ecosystems they're operating in, too. It's very different from the ones we are, which is it, they're in country club territory and they're in Wall Street Journal. Like, that's as far left, probably, as they <laughs> even engage in. Right. And, 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 and to be clear, like, these, these people, just they, they don't want to be ostracized. They don't want to be the person who didn't overturn Roe v. Wade. Continue from your reporting was back in December. I mean, it was it was earlier than I think we had realized. You said it went down to the wire, though. Did did either Kavanaugh or Amy Coney Barrett ever give any reason to anyone to believe that they were going to side with Roberts on this? That's that's a great question, John. And I wanted to know, especially with Brett Kavanaugh, who often will, you know, sound ambivalent and send mixed signals. But in the end, stick with the far right to see just how much encouragement encouragement he might have given the chief as i understand it his vote was was solid but he never said that he wasn't going to listen to the chief so the chief kept trying the thing that happened that as i said really thwarted things uh was when it was clear to the public how justice kavanaugh and justice barrett had voted it locked them in more than more go. than might have been expected at that point and it made it made it all the more difficult. And, you know, I do think that Brett Kavanaugh, despite what he said during his confirmation hearing and despite the way that he has sort of really publicly wrung his hands on this issue, was likely never going to switch. He was probably all right. Uh, She's got to be a little less obvious. The way that she talks about the chief and the way that she talks about the internal workings of his process. She's got a really good sir, I mean, source. I mean, there. yeah, exactly. it's pretty clear who that source is. Yes. Now, I, I wonder if this reporting is coming out now because they're about to conclude the investigation. You know, like, I mean, this is the thing that you, when, when you know, the, that folks need to understand, like when you hear these type of things, when things are reported in a certain way at a time, more often than not, it is not an accident. She's not going out there with that report, particularly if she's sourcing somebody very close to John Roberts, if not John Roberts herself. They are savvy enough to dictate when she makes this report. That's the way it works. And they know who to go to as well. They know who to go to. This is all, this is none of this stuff. It appears to us as if it is, uh, you know, random. It's but the news. It, it, but it is, there is a relationship between people who are savvy, subjects of the news. That means people who are repeatedly subjects of the news and who have access to, to comms professionals and reporters. They have a language that they speak they have essentially agreements that are very explicit. And and so her announcing her making this report now is for a reason. And maybe it's either because a they're about to announce the results of the investigation or B. They're about to say we're not going to announce the results of the investigation. We couldn't figure it out that I mean, one of those two things are happening. But there's one more part of what she said here that I think is really important for people to understand. And it came up with uh, in my debate with Destiny about uh, basically Supreme Court uh, rulings. Because not unlike Citizens United, where there was a case that the plaintiff came in and asked the question, can we play ads for this documentary that we made about Hillary Clinton uh, on TV within 60 days, I think it was, of an election, even though it's been funded and, you know, will it not count as actual electioneering since we have established that we are a film company now, which they did. That was the narrow question.
The plaintiffs never asked the question, can we get rid of all of the constraints on electioneering within 60 days in terms of donations? That question wasn't asked, but the Supreme Court decided we're going to answer that question too. And that's what happened with this Dobbs case. Roberts wanted to address this narrow question. Yes. Is 15 weeks okay? And he was trying to convince the others to do that. And if he had gotten two votes from the right, he would have negotiated with uh, two votes on the left, too. Because you talk about the savviness of someone like Roberts, who's often in the news. This is a part of his savviness, is the, po the political game of the decisions that they're going to make. He understands that in order to implement the agenda of conservative justices, even if he sees himself as the, ch you know, a little bit separate from, say, the theocrats of Coney Barrett or Thomas, he, he, he wants to create a cushion for the political implications of their agenda, which was to cut back, cut into row significantly. He didn't want to do it all the way. He's the chief justice and his uh, country club is in the history books right. where he wants to be seen as someone who guided this. And, and you know, he wants to be read like, you know, uh, the, the people talk about the Burger Court or the Warren Court, you know, like he wants to be perceived that way. And that's what he's trying to do. But but here is uh, the kicker. People should understand this just to get a sense of like what the right wing uh, the, the, the justices will do here. Because, you know, back in the day, I said, like, you know, you, you, you can pass. Bernie can get elected. This is in 2016. Bernie can get elected. And. And do uh, and, and somehow pass uh, single payer health care. But that doesn't mean the Supreme Court's not going to strike it down. This gives you a sense of just how far they're willing to go. And single payer health care is not going to be if it, if it ever gets to the Supreme Court is not going to have the same level of controversy as abortion. This is it. This is the most controversial issue that they could have ruled on singular issue, at least in terms of the way that it's covered within our news. And the chief just did not want to give up. He felt like this decision. No, this was is so the second wrong. clip, right? They did not even take this case to decide Roe v. Wade. They took this case just to decide whether a ban on 15 weeks of uh, uh, a ban on abortions at uh, 15 weeks of pregnancy was constitutional. Mm -hmm. Because as you probably remember, Roe v. Wade and the 1992 Planned Parenthood versus Casey had set up a, a a firewall, essentially, yeah. of viability that you could not, states could not interfere with a woman's right to abortion uh, before a fetus would be viable to live outside the womb. Yeah. And that was at about 23 weeks. Yeah, they really took an opportunity here. That leak, as you said, cementing things is under internal investigation at the court. What's the latest on that investigation? Okay, so, uh, you know, <laughs> we're several months in and law clerks and permanent employees have been asked to turn over uh, uh, electronic devices. They've continued with the search, but uh, there's nobody's been caught. And uh, there's just a lot of skepticism inside that despite how aggressive yeah. the investigation yeah. has yeah. gone, that they are not close mm. to finding out who it is. Yeah. You know, they're not. Uh, draft was dated February 10th and it became public through Politico uh, when it published it on May 2nd. So, you know, it could have changed hands. It might not be just one single person. Yeah, uh, you don't know how uh, how strategic it was uh, that someone did try to leak it. But you know what? In the end, it's uh, the effect it had. It could have very much have been a very strategic leak. Brianna. OK, yeah, they got right. no, so they're not going to find it. They're not. They, I yeah. mean, there it is. I thought the, she. <laughs> I think that's one prediction I got right. Uh, they, well, <laughs> they know. The, uh, they know. Roberts knows. Yeah. And that's why he's going and he's telling this story right now. I mean, it, it is... Um, Meaning, basically, the outcome of any investigation is not going to have the effect of telling his side of the story, essentially, because there won't be, there won't be somebody to Meaning to there's pinpoint. not going to be an outcome. Right, right. So he's got to get out ahead of it and tell his side. It's not so much he's got to get it. Uh, well, yes, he's got to get it. He wants it on the record at this point. What happened? And it, it maybe maybe it's a little bit of a threat, too, because he's mad. He's mad. Yeah. 
I mean, this is just like uh, politics within Versailles as, as everybody else is just, you know, reaping the effects of, of Roe versus Wade. Yeah. This is real housewives of the Supreme Court as well, I mean, but honestly, though, I mean, this is what their this is what their concern is, as opposed to the material implications of it. It's it's office politics. It's silly. The, well, and the, legacy the, stuff. The, the reality uh, of all this. And and I've also said this for years, and I have not stopped becoming amazed by it. You know, as uh, back in the aughts, when Joe Liebman would just get ticked off and decide like, man, I'm not going to. Joe, Joe Manchin's doing that right now. Manchin, Manchin's, Manchin's just, you know, like just a uh, buck raking. But there is this like, when you start to realize that in the Senate in particular and in the Supreme Court, Senate more than in the Supreme Court. I mean, look, they, they horse trade and they horse trade in the Supreme Court. And it is at least um, it's not, you know, what's going on there is not it's not petty. It's Machiavellian what they did. He by, by making it public, they locked him in and they knew it. And that's the way that that, that works with it, with political animals like that in the Senate. You can have people not get health care. Tens of millions of people not get health care just because one dude's pissed at another dude. Like literally. Yeah. It's uh, dying empire stuff. And to give you an idea, just for uh, folks, context on Joan Biskupic, uh, she's a Supreme Court biographer. She's bi she's done biographies for Sandra Day O'Connor, Scalia, and uh, um, Sotomayor. And her most recent is not on John Roberts. So oh. that's, that's, I'm sure the sourcing is can you we can we can you know derive a little bit of understanding from that. <laughs> there you go.